Welcome to Mr. Bob's Railroad Workbench, where we talk about math and science and history and trains and throw in some fun activities as well. Hello, I'm Bob Lettenberger, Mr. Bob, Education Director for the National Railroad Museum. If you're watching us live and want to type in a question, feel free to do so. We'll answer those questions after our segment today. If you'd also like to just type in and let us know who you are and where you're watching from, we'd love to hear from you. Also, make sure you like the National Railroad Museum's Facebook site. So, you just bought a brand new steam locomotive. And now you need to find out if it's going to perform the way it was designed to. During the steam era, this was very important because steam locomotive construction was all custom. Each railroad working with a locomotive builder would develop a set of specifications to meet their needs. And the only way to find out if the locomotive actually could do what it was supposed to do was to build one and then test it in a train. Until you actually had a locomotive, all the math was theoretical as to what that locomotive would do. To test, you needed a very special car, something called a dynamometer. And if you take a look at the train we have on the workbench, tucked in behind our big boy is an example of a dynamometer. This is basically a rolling measuring lab that is used to measure the tractive effort of a steam locomotive. At the National Railroad Museum, we have a dynamometer car. It is from the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad. It's number 30. It has recently been restored and now is in our Lenfesti Center. So, how does a dynamometer car work? Well, here you see an artist's rendering of how that locomotive uh, might look pulling a dynamometer car. It was always tucked in directly behind the locomotive, and the reason for that is that the coupler on the front of the dynamometer car, and yes, the dynamometer car did have a front and a back, that front coupler was spring-loaded so that it could sense the pulling power of the locomotive. If we go inside the dynamometer car, the unit right here is the one that is actually doing the measuring. Inside of this cylinder, there is a piston. On one side of the piston, the cylinder is filled with oil. The oil butts up against a leather diaphragm toward the back of the cylinder. As the locomotive pulls, the pulses, the power that the locomotive is exerting, are transmitted through that diaphragm. From the diaphragm, they travel on airlines over here to the recording table. On the recording table, the paper that you see is actually moving along as the train is moving forward. Across the top of the recording table are a series of pens and the signal that is coming from that diaphragm over here to the table gets recorded on the paper. The crew would also be marking down such things as mileage, making observations about the weather, be looking at their track guide to see what kind of curvature they were following or what kind of grade they might be on as well. Now a dynamometer was a car that normally the public did not see on a railroad or maybe was not familiar with if they saw it come by in a freight train, but the railroads were very proud of their mechanical abilities and what they were doing to better serve their customers. And some railroads, example here like the New York Central, actually ran advertising in several national magazines describing their dynamometer car and how it worked. They all worked in basically the same way. Yes, you could say it was kind of a test tube that you put the locomotive in to see how it was actually running. It's a picture here of the crew on that New York Central uh, dynamometer car dressed in their coveralls. This was basically a science lab, but being right behind a steam locomotive wasn't necessarily always the cleanest facility to be working in. Also, the crew on a dynamometer car actually lived on the car and they could be out on the system for several months at a time. In the back half of the car, there was a kitchen, there was bunk space, there were bathrooms with showers and office space for the crew to complete their work and, of course, their normal living functions. 
Well, at the beginning of our discussion today, I had mentioned and showed an image of our dynamometer car at the National Railroad Museum. This happens to be a painting done by artist Steve Kruger. It's one of the paintings in the National Railroad Museum's membership series. If you like that image and would like to attain a print from it, I invite you to stop by our museum website, nationalrrmuseum.org. Look at the top for the shop tab, click there, and as you explore the railroad art section, you can find that particular print of the Chicago Burlington Quincy number 30 dynamometer car in the National Railroad Museum's collection. You know, at the National Railroad Museum, it's our mission to inspire lifelong learning by providing dynamic educational opportunities through the preservation of railroad objects, engaging exhibits, and innovative programs. As a nonprofit organization, we are supported by both public and private donations, and of course, the support from our museum members. For more information on how you can support the National Railroad Museum or to become a museum member, visit our website, nationalrrmuseum.org. I'm Mr. Bob. Thanks for stopping by Mr. Bob's Railroad Workbench, and we'll see you again real soon.